Hey everyone, it's Karen, and this week we're doing something special and bringing you a recording that we did with the Growing Up Christian podcast. These guys are fun and hilarious, and they have a really good podcast going with uh, lots of smart content, but that's not what you're going to get this week. We will be doing our regular shtick next week. Um, Please find us on all the socials, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, our private Facebook group. Go look at our new spring merch that's really fun and cute. And also, don't forget, if you want to sponsor us, you can go to our website, deconversiontherapypodcast.com, and sign up for the paid newsletter. And I hope you enjoy this. Uh, Yes, my Karen's audio is crap, but everyone else sounds stellar. All right, don't be a ship pile. Apparently, the production values got way out of hand, (laughs) and they were bringing this camel down the aisle, and then the camel just boop tipped right over onto a pew of people. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. Smushed <laughs> half a pew. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did anyone get actually injured? We don't care. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Welcome to Growing Up Christian. Uh, I'm Casey. And I'm Sam. And today we're joined by some fellow podcasters from a really great podcast. It's a lot of fun. Karen and Bonnie from Deconversion Therapy. How are you guys doing? Good. Great. How are you guys? We are good. Yeah. Um, hanging in there. Thanks for talking for me, Casey. Doing great. <laughs> <laughs> hanging yeah, in there. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is that not I a phrase uh, that normal people use anymore? Hanging in there? Well, when, just, you, um, when you ask how you're doing, I love it because when people ask me, I'm like, getting it done. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's all arbitrary statements of yeah. just like existence. <laughs> the worst yeah. is when people go, oh, it's just another beautiful day in paradise. That makes me want to choke a person. Yeah. Or uh, live in the dream. Uh, <laughs> live in the yeah. dream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My friend does that all the time and he hates it and That's he still does it. He can't said break with- himself. But that's just only said with sarcasm, right? No, no. Uh, what? I mean, there's a lot of people who say that, thinking they're the first people who have ever said that to me. <laughs> that's the meth generation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Hit them hard. Yeah. I feel like we should, um, <laughs> uh, because I've had this criticism uh, about myself before, in that you listen in on a podcast and have no idea who's talking because there's uh, new voices on the podcast. I feel like maybe we should um, have some way of delineating between who Karen and Bonnie is for our listeners. <laughs> well, I'm Karen. I'm sort of the lazy voice, but with the <laughs> higher intelligence behind it. Oh. Bonnie is more the bubbly Bell-like town. Okay, Bonnie. Bell, like the princess, or no? Like the fresh prince of Bel Air. (laughs) (laughs) No, isn't that like a Beauty and the Beast thing? No, I'm Bell. I was in the handbell choir, so I understand. Oh, handbells! Yes, handbells. I haven't thought about that in a long time. All right, I, F I handbells do because in one hand. I auditioned for it and I didn't know how to read music, and they said <laughs> flat no. <laughs> what do you have to know how to read music to do a bell choir? You need to learn your yes. one note, right? You have one note, and you just wait till it shows up. You have to know you just when ring to your do fucking it. bell, right? You can't randomly just ding dong it. You yeah, gotta know. When yeah. your <laughs> yeah, when your boring part comes between the other boring parts. Well, that was the whole thing is you had like one person who had like the six chimes that had all the off notes. And he might only play like one of those every, you know, he might play it three times in the whole song, but he's got like eight different ones he's got to juggle throughout the whole thing. Right. There was power. I mean, you whip out those gloves 
among yeah. your rejected friends like Bonnie, and you're like, excuse me, I have to put them on my gloves. <laughs> and when you got to cover them and touch them and make them do that plunk sound. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the gloves, there's like the white gloves that were like kept in a case, right? Like and yeah. nothing could touch the bells except for those gloves. That's right. Like Mickey Mouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or See, like we didn't have at an archive at some library. Only Whatever they were covered with germs. Like that. So I'm glad you're dirty. <laughs> yeah, they're like bowling shoes, but for your, yes. your uh, search kid hands. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't have bells though. We had chimes. So ours were like these long square tubes. What? <laughs> what? I yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I think like chimes a, like were an probably organ. <laughs> like, like the back part of an organ. Of something. Like uh, kind of like that. They were square though, and they had like this little hammer thing with a, a rubber piece on the end of it. Yeah, and you'd boom, and then you'd uh, pull it back against your shoulder to shut it up. Oh, oh yes. That, okay, that's... I remember those. Very advanced. I think Eric Clapton played that in one song. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody ever went pro. You know, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were people that occasionally did like hand bell or hand chime solo. Or, like they would do like a solo performance where they played all of them and it was just like them running back and forth <laughs> the table. And, and they never they were, stayed in time, so it was always like <laughs> listening to someone's piano recital when they were like t- like two months in. Right, <laughs> rendition of chocolate. sweat, and maybe that's why the gloves. All that running. I've got to write down to to like do a YouTube search of that later. Yeah, look up some. Because Karen will tell you, I might do it right now, and you don't want to hear me. <laughs> I, 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 I got to see what that is. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't mean to get back into it. So, <laughs> I guess to uh, <laughs> to uh, wait. So, which one of you did? Uh, one of you did bell choir. Uh, I did. Yeah, uh, the real Christian in the group. Nice. Um, once you hear our stories, you know why I tease Bonnie for never being a true believer. But yeah, I did the handbells oh, and read music, and you played piano. Ooh, I could only play half of endless love, but <laughs> yeah. What else do you need, honestly? <laughs> so it's only like three songs that are appropriate for a church performance. It's like holy, holy, holy. Uh, his eyes on the sparrow mm-hmm. and endless love. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> or jungle love. <laughs> yeah, dude. It was without fail. Like two, two of the girls from my school. It, it, they rotated, but two of them every year would do his eyes on the sparrow for like the competition thing. <laughs> and they try to throw in all their trills. They're like uh, Mariah Carey. <laughs> oh, those they would actually, fun, I think. Dude, you would lose points if you navigated away from the music. Like really? if you did like a vocal slide, like you did, uh, like if there wasn't distinctive notes in that progression. Gotcha. You'd get marked off because that was seen as contemporary. What? Oh, really? That's like that's like doing a little too much hip in the step touch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and right. you had to stand with your hands by your side. Yeah. And like that was that was it. And I one time I got marked off, like we didn't win first place in this trio that I did because they thought that my pants were made of denim. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't seal them up afterwards just to make sure. No, I think he must have decided like it's I'm close su- enough for me. That's, I'm surprised that wasn't somebody's job beforehand is just filling up all the boys' pants to make sure that they weren't made of denim. It's like uh, it's the youth job. Yeah. <laughs> that, was for the that was a yeah. truly magical performance. <laughs> <laughs> Karen will tell you about. Uh, um, what was the thing that you and, and other Karen did where you, you got in trouble up. about the step touching and yeah, the dancing? Yeah. <laughs> this is making yeah, me really good. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, we Karen, get, I guess. <laughs> that's right. We get scolded for, you know, if our, uh, it's not even possible to step touch 
and have your hip just go from one side to the other. Like your leg does have to make a movement, but we'd get scolded for that because that's too much hip. You did. Too much hip, the thing about Noah. Well, you can never be too careful. Because we did choir performances with our youth group. And then, then oh, I don't know whose decision it was to uh, to say, oh, you know what we're going to do for the summer youth trip? We're going to take you kids on a little tour of, like, northern Florida, south Georgia. And on one of these days, we're going to bring you all to a prison. You're going to sing for the inmates. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and um, my boyfriend at the time was like, you're going to wear one of my shirts. I'm like, why would I wear one of your shirts? And he's like, I don't need those guys looking at you and getting, you know, material for later. I'm like, what are you talking about? So, <laughs> All I can think right. of is like that scene in Silence of the Lambs where Clarice is like leaving the prison. Right. <laughs> yeah. We were just... basically just pedo bait, but we thought, <laughs> you know... These teens, they're going to come in to these hardened criminals and something about our Izod polo shirts are going to make them suddenly repent. It's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. They're going to have a real come to Jesus moment later that evening. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, trying to be a lady and not, you know, latch onto that joke. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we only ever got to perform for like invalids. Like they would take <laughs> us to the nursing home and we performed for like the people that were almost gone. Like this is how they're spending their last day listening yeah. to a, a pitchy, <laughs> pitchy Christian choir full of kids who didn't want to be there. Um, uh, I would say we all wanted to be there because we were then not home. So yeah. that was half of the joy. Uh, I signed up for everything to not to just get to just to have something to do as a homeschooled boy who never got out of the house. Oh my gosh! Right, right. So, that's that's our I nightmare. Want- <laughs> <laughs> now we're all experiencing being homeschooled. Oh my god! So uh, I'm getting the impression that you two go way back. Yes. So we lived. Bonnie's grandparents moved onto my street, it was mine first, um, in South Florida when she was about one and a half. They brought her down in a stroller, and that's when we got to know each other. And then it was one of those things because Bonnie's mom was a single mother, and so we're like, well, we're going to go to this daycare. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Bonnie, you go to that. You know, we're going to go to church. Well, it'd be good because I'm working. Bonnie, go to that. So um, you can call me a young missionary. You can call me a trendsetter for her. But that's how she got involved in the church. And my parents were already, you know, deep in the Southern Baptist stuff. So my consummate carpooler. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Bonnie, did your mom ever take to, did your your mom ever have an investment in? Christianity, or is it just something that became your thing because of uh, your missionary friend? <laughs> it it did, but so when I was like um, three or something, they they caught me not napping, and I was memorizing the, the yeah, the, <laughs> it's a big one. So uh, there was just too much energy, and they caught me memorizing the alphabet backwards. They're like, <laughs> okay, you need to <laughs> you need to go somewhere. Something's wrong with this kid. Yep. So they took me to do an interview and I had to go there where, where we both went because the public schools wouldn't take me early. So, um, I went to the interview, they slapped me in there early and then harnessed all the energy. So I think the church part of it, it just always seemed like, Oh, this is what you do. You go to chapel on Fridays. I don't remember going to church per se so much until like junior high school. Okay. When it became more of a, um, oh, I know when my when when I switched to public school in eighth grade, a it was horrible. It was private school all the way up until up through middle school. Yep, it was 
Baptist private school all the way up until eighth grade. And then, um, it was, it was a shock and I was, I was exposed to all these people who I'd never met before, like Jews who were my favorite people <laughs> ever. Like everybody who was Jewish, who I met in eighth grade was funny and smart and like, oh, where have these people been all my life? No, nope, not in the Baptist church. So if only um, you could have moved on to the same street as a Jewish kid. Oh, if only <laughs> you're right. Um, so, so then that's when I remember thinking, all right, I better go back to the whole youth group thing, uh, to kind of have some sense of continuity there. Okay. Scared straight. <laughs> it was, did you go to the yeah. same youth group as the, as the church that you had been going to all those years? Was that at the same church from when you first oh, started yes. going up through high school? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that was actually was, pretty wild to stay in one church that entire time. I don't know a lot of people were, who no, we weren't vagabonds like the rest of you guys. Our church <laughs> right. was the church. It was huge. It had everything you could think of. It was like a mega church before mega churches came along because it was still traditional. But it was the one that even the people who weren't Christian would want to come to every once in a blue moon. And you talk oh. about bad choirs. We had a really good choir, and we put on this annual performance of the Singing Christmas Tree every year that people who had nothing to do with Jesus would come to see because it was a good program. <laughs> yeah. When I, it sounds like um, – what was the one, Casey, that they did at at Thomas Road Baptist Church in Lynchburg where um, – they would do this like big Christmas program every year and spend a shit load of money on this yeah. massive production. And it would just, I mean, it, and they would sell, I, I don't think they sold tickets to it. Actually. I think it was just like a come one, come all like trying to get ever If they can see the most in, incredible Christmas extravaganza <laughs> ever, we'll get them for the rest of the year. That's right. Not us. We sold tickets. <laughs> Got to spend money to save souls. Yeah. Oh, if you do a YouTube search of like Baptist Church Christmas Camel, you'll see <laughs> you'll see a great video. This was after our time there. Apparently, the production values got way out of hand, and they were bringing this camel down the aisle, and then the camel just boop tipped right over onto a pew of people. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. Smushed <laughs> half a pew. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did anyone get actually injured? We don't care. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. That's fun. It's better to not know anyway. It's <laughs> um, <laughs> No follow-up video to know. I just want to stop there. <laughs> But what what upset me, and I th I think I've told Karen this before, is when they would have like these animal wranglers, because we had a pony or something in one year of our singing Christmas tree. It's a donkey. That's not like That's a right. pony. Yes, a donkey um, or a lamb or something like that. These animal wranglers, like they were not Christians. They're like, fuck it, I'll show up with my animals and, you know, walk down the aisle here. You know, make sure you like, evacuate your bowels and your bladder first. <laughs> That's I, I, like a bunch of Joe Exotics. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I when I was in high school, I was helping out with a VBS uh, at my church, and they brought in I don't know whatever the theme was. Uh, for some reason, it was found reasonable to bring a camel into the church at the end of the week for the kids to see they didn't even oh do anything my with gosh. It. they just like brought it in and everyone was like whoa camel and then they like camel left like it was like a maybe a 20 minute thing well you know it's it's not a commonly known thing but most communion crackers are actually camel meat <laughs> <laughs> just, just grind them up <laughs> well, that's it. Can you imagine like your family business is raising livestock for churches? I mean, that's a real thing now. Wait, that's, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because because they, I guess they our, have a lot of events now where they need to bring in like sheep and goats and He's like yeah. a farmer, but like his whole year depends on like the nativity <laughs> scene season. <Yeah. laughs> like, hoping for a good year this year. <laughs> yeah, they've now got you got your Easter in there, your Palm Sunday. You can, right. you know. Oh, yeah. You're riding on a donkey. Mm hmm. 
Well, yeah. so um, we also had a thing toward the later part of our high school years where uh, if it was a holiday like Christmas, we would have a Christmas Eve service or New Year's Eve service just to kind of keep the high school kids out of trouble. Oh, like, oh, you get into so much trouble on Christmas Eve. Well, if you're home from, you know, if your friends are home from school and you might be tempted to go out with them and enjoy life, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> drink. That was our, our whole focus in our youth group was don't drink, don't have sex for sure. And, you know, the don't dancing was a gateway. Mm, yeah, it's, that's scary. Okay. Dancing scary. Uh, yeah. So they talked to us about dancing, but n- no one danced. Like our school didn't have any dances, and it was all the same people. So like I don't know why we spent time talking about that, <laughs> but we did. It was like just in case, you know, Rams just in case you're case. hanging out in your parents' living room and you know some music comes on and you get the urge to just start dancing with each other. You got to. You gotta watch out. Someday you're gonna leave this place. This safety of, <laughs> of safety. And you might be at a wedding and people are, are drinking beer and they're dancing. <laughs> and it's gonna look like fun and it's not. It's not fun. You're gonna you wanna participate in a flash mob. <laughs> but you gotta be careful. It's not gonna be fun when you're burning in hell, right, guys? <laughs> Too much hip. Too much I'm hip. Be drunk. <laughs> So when you were both in high school, I'll start, I guess we'll start with you, Karen. What, um, like, what was your level of buy-in to the whole thing? Were you just super deep into it or was it just something you did to do or because it was part of your life and your family did it? Like, I'm curious to know, like, how you internalized it or how you think you did, I guess. I was definitely, like, all my identity was with our youth group. Okay. So just today on Twitter, there's some people who are tweeting like my starter pack for high school and they Mm. put four pictures and, you know, they might have a picture of Nirvana and then a picture of, you know, I don't know. Um, And I thought maybe I should do it with just uh, a cross necklace, (laughs) uh, Bible and a little carry thing. Um, some assorted highlighters and (laughs) an Amy Grant, you know, album or something. So I was definitely, I was horrified of even thinking about dating a non-Christian. It it might've, you know, it equated to dating a a Satanist. Like those were (laughs) interchangeable. So, yeah, I mean, I didn't, never drank, never uh, I was never even offered drugs. No one even wasted thinking about that on me. Um, <laughs> and my core group, yeah, we're all our church friends. What can we yeah. tell about the time that you did date the guy who was not from the church and what they... Well, I felt God calling me because this guy <laughs> had a nice body. And so... <laughs> I, started dating him and then and he wasn't a christian i was totally you know that really did mess me up i was just like oh god um and then he came to school one day and he's like guess what i did last night and i'm like went to the gym you idiot and he was like no i um i got saved and i was like what what because it was like a you know that would have been like a monday night And he said, yeah, some people from your church came over. So my youth minister got the one other gym rat that (laughs) at our church and said, you come with me because you're going to be able to identify with this guy because Karen's dating a non-Christian. And they went over and did a door knock and asked to go inside and did the whole thing with them and. He was like, oh, if this means I can spend more time with my girlfriend, I'll do it. So <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I was so humiliated, like, that they just popped over to my boyfriend's house. Oh, my God. that's who, who commissioned that? Like, did the youth pastor just decide that that was, like, the thing to do? I did think a few people, they were very concerned. So I think there was some discussion like, 
you know, we got to watch out because Karen is dating a non-Christian. And then somehow, yeah, all of it sort of bubbled together and someone came up with that bright idea to oh humiliate God. me. How fucking funny <laughs> is it that that they this kid not being a Christian, like – they go to his house. They just <laughs> probably what in 15, 20 minutes, give him the quote unquote gospel <laughs> message. And he's just like, okay. And they're like, well, <laughs> our work here is done. Like that was the easiest salvation we've ever had. I mean, yeah, they soul heard yeah. what they wanted and we're just like, if that's not indicative of what like Christianity has <laughs> become of just people hearing what they want and moving on is I don't even know what it is. That's incredible. And the strange thing is he really thought he was saved. Like he had no change of heart that he, it wasn't explained to him enough that he understood it, the real concept. So he shows up and he tells me that. And then he shows me he around his neck, he's wearing um, a like old cross necklace. His mother <laughs> had given him, you know, a long time ago. And it was the one with the Jesus still on it. So I wanted to say wrong one. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know my lord and savior no, I came off the cross that's right yeah i appreciate the sentiment but he uh fire insurance <laughs> <laughs> when we were at um when casey do you remember humble was it humble tip when we were at liberty um <laughs> that terrible what? name there was a there was a rapper at liberty was, uh, sorry i mean he was Sorry. a nice guy. I, I knew I him a little bit. I don't know what to be offended by here. He, he, no, yeah, no, we'll get it. There's a few things. Uh, okay. So, yeah, he was a rapper uh, at Liberty. He worked there. He was like a recruiter. Um, oh, and his rapping. name, he went by the rapper name of Humble Tip. And that was always funny to us because it was like a lot of different variations of like Humble, just the tip, things like that. <laughs> no, of course, yeah. that's the direction you're going to go in. And was he a white guy? No, he was he was a black guy. So I I don't think I know that dude. He was the black guy. <laughs> <laughs> I said ah, oh, there's there, um, but he had this song um, called no no. It was like put it was like put your uh, SPF on, and it was like salvation prevents fire was what the acronym was for, oh, and it was no. really embarrassing <laughs> it's on you i mean find it on youtube it's a good listen uh oh, gotta yeah. write that down yeah. the chimes now it's a humble tip uh put your spf on <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah you had a lot of the uh, musicians coming out of liberty yeah it definitely was a breeding ground for that sort of thing uh I don't know i guess actually i don't know which one specific i i know of a few um and, and that Certain people, uh, there was a lot of contemporary Christian artists that had, uh, like, went to Liberty or had a Liberty affiliation for sure. There yeah. was a ton of bands. Like, while we were there, there was tons of bands. Right. Yeah. I believe You it. know, when I was in school in Athens, Georgia, there were tons of bands. So I get to say that, but you guys don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Bonnie, uh, what was your, what was your <laughs> buy into this? So, wait, first, Karen, actually, were you the, like, a, to bring a Bible to school, try to convert your friends type, or you just do no, school and then, no, no. then your identity and friendships were really just in youth group. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was, so we had this thing called evangelism explosion and it was like this class you did. And then they would take you to go out and witness. And of course, they gave you these really tacky gold tone pins that said EE on it. And my hope was like when they drop us off at the mall, that someone is just going to come up to me and go, nice gold tone pin you got there. Do you have any <laughs> life lessons for me? Because I was too, like, I could never go up to anyone and even know where to start with the witnessing. So I was, I wanted to, but um, yeah, I was much too shy and too scared and, all that, but I was definitely also too shy and too scared to do anything out of bounds. So, yeah, your your shyness and your uh, nervousness wasn't didn't outweigh their need to not burn in hell for all of eternity. That's nice. Karen. No, exactly. <laughs> I thought but wanted the, him. The, wearing the pin thing is a realtor trick. Like, oh, if I wear my pin on my outfit, uh, and I just happen to be stopping in at Walmart. 
you know, in between showings, then someone will go, oh, my God, you're a realtor? I need to buy a house. Are we talking about a pin? P-I-N. She wore a, she wore a lavalier pin. Yeah. Like a, like yeah. a bad fraternity lapel pin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know if um, this is just my experience, but I have never seen someone wearing a pin and walked up to him and like, oh, what that? What's that? That's cool. <laughs> Nice pin. Exactly. You just broke so, that. That's fun that they thought that that would work. The, the people who developed that program had asked a lot of people about their pins before and were like, <laughs> man, I do this all the time. Everybody fucking loves pins. We should start a program where we just give out pins to kids and people will ask them about their Lord and Savior. Yeah. Or a brooch. Yeah. <laughs> a brooch. All right. <laughs> so, like Bonnie, I wanna, so, what about you, Bonnie, when you were in youth group? Was this like a. Um, was it the same thing for you? I mean, what what was your experience like? I remember thinking that it was real, but that I didn't quite go along with the notion that no one else's religion could be correct. And I thought, well, hmm. what about all these people I like who, again, you know, are Jewish? Um and I thought, well, you know, I can I can enjoy what they're offering, but not be so, uh, you know, so snotty and so um, superior to think that ours could be the only religion. There's just no way. That's just the devil talking. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I was going to um, say, you, you're clearly the first one in your friends group to throw away everything, weren't you? Oh, but I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> That's the, I mean, that's, that's my ability is I can, I can be, um, you know, every man and, and blend in with whatever crowd is believing whatever. And then I'll keep my thoughts to myself and then, you know, go along with things and, and be a part of the youth group. And I was the youth group president there. Senior you guys had year. Presidents of the group president? I don't even yeah. remember that. Shut up. It's because you had <laughs> denial because you were jealous. It was, it was a self-appointed <laughs> title. <laughs> it was not. Karen, you ran a mean campaign, but you lost. Get over it. <laughs> you got your gloves. That's all you get. <laughs> but I will tell you, um, so we're we're playing tennis one day in phys ed or whatever you guys call it. PE, we called it. And I remember um, we learned the song, Shut de Do, Keep Out de Double. And it was sung like, what? you know, yeah, it was sung like a Caribbean island accent. <laughs> kind of thing. That sounds awful. Shut, yeah. It's oh, a great song. It all over YouTube. Yes. It is all over YouTube. So, and they all sing it with the accent. Shut de Do, Keep Out de Double. So I was playing <laughs> tennis with my friend Rachel who is Jewish. <laughs> so uh, I taught her the song and we were singing it while we we're playing. And I remember walking away going, maybe, maybe that'll be witnessing to her. <laughs> maybe that's my little <laughs> really super, super subtle, smooth way of doing it. And then she went to Yeshiva University and it didn't, <laughs> didn't take. They didn't. Um, <laughs> no. It's like uh Sharing a, a Christian band with one of the public school kids. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just giving you a little taste. A little oh my taste gosh. And in good. ninth grade, I had to write a speech for our speech class. And I remember thinking, this is exactly what Jesus would want me to do. He would want me to take this opportunity where I'm going to have to give a speech to people and share the gospel. Yes. So I tried to turn the gospel into a speech that was a persuasive speech and it did not work out. <laughs> I was like, that's when I was like, I can't persuade people based on this stuff. It's in the Bible. It's not, it's not a generally accepted book where you can use it as persuasive speech material. So I ended up doing a report on hospice care. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a pivot there. Too bad they didn't have, did they not have, um, was did Lee Strobel's book A Case for Christ not come out yet? I don't know. I wouldn't have read it if it had. That was oh my we were already Yeah, we were on the right side. We didn't have to worry about it. And you know, whenever we were failed witnessers, we always would just remind ourselves we planted a seed. That's all we needed yep. to do. Yep. 
that yes. seed will grow. Planted a seed. But did you water that seed later? Because if you didn't, you fucked up. <laughs> That's, that was, we heard that was Liberty's, uh, yeah, responsibility. Liberty. It reminds Liberty. me of Liberty. <laughs> you want to get your add. seed wet, Liberty's the spot. Well, so I will. I, I will tell you that that we went to at least as far as uh, when I started doing everything there. It was Sunday school um, on Sunday, and then church service, and then when we were old enough, we would then go out to lunch with the church people, and then we would usually go to the beach with the church people. And you would wear home. a one piece or a modest tankini. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, of course. But then go make out with my boyfriend in the dunes and have, you know, <laughs> this other guy find us. That was uh, nice. Um, that yeah. Fun. Did you get a talking to? <laughs> no, he was only a year older. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> anyway. He was, um, he was just staring. <laughs> right. Just, oh, uh, was he just staring or was he doing something else too? <laughs> he was praying. You, and I think about who it was. It was nothing, none of the above. <laughs> his, his hairline and his eyes over top of the dune. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so let's see. It was Sunday, Sunday, go home, shower, go to Sunday evening service, and then go to a dinner afterwards with the church people and then get reprimanded occasionally by the management to our youth pastor to tell us to tip. Oh my God. Um, Come yeah. on. <laughs> I hate how cliche that is. I know. I know. And um, then let's see, there was Wednesday. Wednesday was choir rehearsal and then youth group and then church service. So it was a, it was a lot of hours. Yeah, Bonnie, that you had a busy. Uh, that's a, I didn't even. I don't know if that's just because uh, I feel like in New England it wasn't quite as busy. Like I always did non-denominational churches, so it was like I just had church on Sunday mornings and then youth group during the week, and occasionally yeah. there'd be like a Bible study that got started up that I would always uh, probably go to. But all non-denominational churches, you have to get there early and stay there late for the chairs, right? Yeah. Oh my God, I've done my fair share. Of that. Is that true? Uh, yeah. yeah. Actually, like in the YMCA, back all, yeah. they all got to do the folding fun. chairs and put it on this big rack where we, God <laughs> blessed us with permanent pews. Um, <laughs> but I remember I would start even earlier on Sundays because they would use. Uh, probably starting second grade or first grade, us for babysitting the babies. So it was like this, you know, um, child labor where (laughs) we're doing all the diaper changes and then there's just one adult woman in the room. And of course she takes the one rocking chair (laughs) and the sleeping baby while we're sweating, running around, um, but yeah, we live there. <laughs> even to this day, I can think nobody in their right mind, even when I was a child, would ask me to babysit. <laughs> I babysat one time in my life, and it was for a college professor who I guess just didn't know me. <laughs> <laughs> you're in college. You're probably old enough to babysit. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, what? Did, did you both uh, go? Did you go to separate colleges and go oh, your own no. ways? No, we went to the same. We went to the same high school and then we went to the same college and we're roommates. Nice. We didn't we didn't hang out in high school much together. We were in two different very cool groups. I was in <laughs> choir and she was in theater. And then oh, yeah. um but then yeah, in college they actually put us together, I think. And no. we're like, oh, this is awesome. I was gonna head to University of Georgia and then decided to stay uh in town. And my mom said, well, I'm not getting you a car, so why don't you go live on campus? And so I was talking to somebody, and they're like, you know, Karen's living on campus, too. And so then we were like, oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. So So we we both lived in town and went to school and lived in the dorms to get the college experience. But this wasn't Christian college? Yes, it, it was. was. It okay. was connected to. If you said that and I missed it, I'm going to look stupid when people listen to this later. Connected to the same church that we grew up in. <gasps> I yep. love when colleges do that. Yeah, it's a compound. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a total compound, but, you know, walking to church was pretty quick. Did so. you pursue secular degrees? 
Well, I, let's see, I did what everyone started out with, psychology, because we all thought it was so cool. And then I switched to English. Um, but Bonnie left two years through is when she realized everything was bullshit and she left. Ooh, early yeah. onset. Mm-hmm. That's well, tough to do from a Christian college because yeah. no, no, it was boring. Friends. It was boring. It was the most <laughs> exciting time of my life. <laughs> but yeah, but I was her. obsessed with yeah. like the movie Animal um, House. But I'm yeah, like, so I I know there for and, a fact there are other things to do in college, <laughs> and I uh, did not wanted know. to go experience life. But the, I remember the day that it happened, and this is part of our story that we tell on the air sometimes. On the air, that's funny. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to talk about one of the concepts that one of our teachers was professing in class. And, um, and I asked one of our guy friends uh, about it. And I said, what do you think about blah, 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 blah? And he goes, it's because God said. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, but when you think about it in this context, nope, God said. Like what? So that was his way of college. And I didn't like that because I thought that we should discuss things. And then I was like, if my friends are just saying, because God says, well, you know, that's not talking it over. So that was kind of like your, the, the beginning of your exit then? It was just uh, of that, From that school. And, and yeah, from that school, I went home and I'm like, all right, get my application back in there. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving next year. And told my mom, and she's like, well, you got to give me a good reason why. And I was like, uh, because this is not the college experience that I was hoping to have. And I'm like, all right. Because, Mom, I want to party. I want to drink. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because <laughs> I've seen Animal House. <laughs> 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 so she she became a heathen and that's when we lost her to the world did you was there any rift in your friendship when that happened i don't no. think so um no i was you know by then you start developing all your friends and all that so i think everything was yeah totally cool um she was still my maid of honor when i got married Wow, yeah. that's cool. Lifelong friendship. And now you're podcasting together. That's really neat. Yeah. And we both had Amy Grant hairstyles at her nice. wedding. <laughs> I had an Amy Grant jacket, too. <laughs> did Amy Grant become, didn't she do something that made Christians hate her? Yes. One, uh, she did wear jeans, and that <laughs> was an issue to some people. I had never heard of that, but someone told me, um, yeah, we can listen to her because of the jeans. But when she <laughs> she went mainstream, okay. as in she thought that was good, people thought that was bad. So that was one rift, or that's number two if you count the jeans. <laughs> and then the third was she got a divorce. Oh, okay, um, that's that right. One. Yeah, so she you know, was really messing up. So two years ago, I live in Nashville. I used to go to church with where Amy Grant and Michael W. Smith and all them went oh. But years ago. But um, I think it was like two years ago. I don't like concerts. I just, they're not my thing. But my <laughs> husband wanted to surprise me and got me tickets to the Amy Grant Vince Gill Christmas show, which they do every year. <laughs> Everyone has driven in from Branson, Missouri, and, you know, Alabama, and they're all excited. It was terrible. <laughs> it feels amazing, but I just was like, this is making me so sad. Oh. <laughs> it's just like Amy Grant's still trying to hold on to it. Like, she's very good, and people love her for what she does, but when you grew up in it, in that different way, you just sort of, uh, yeah, it was hard to take. Yeah. <laughs> it's like your, your perfect picture of this perf old memory is just like shattered. Now it's just old. Yeah. <laughs> that is like, <laughs> like you, you mentioned Branson, like that is Branson in a nutshell. It's just right. like has been's, uh, giving it their best last shot before they die. Making yeah. money. I know. I hear Speaking you can get some really good um, 
silver colloidal silver is that it to yeah, carry yeah. COVID there from jim baker jim <laughs> baker, <laughs> jim baker. colloidal <laughs> silver cures everything yeah that's right. I snort that in my nose <laughs> every morning. And I'm not kidding because this woman who I work with, her physician told her to take it and she got one for me. And I'm like, whatever, can't hurt. <laughs> yeah, sniff, is. Sniff. But about the Amy Grant thing, today, if she was a Christian singer and she went mainstream, she would be heralded. Especially yeah. in like the what do we call it the uh, the money gospel? What is it called, Karen? Prosperity gospel. That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's a really fun point because you're right. I think if she had because I mean Christianity has been obsessed with like, Casey and I have talked about it a little bit before. Uh, as has anybody really. I'm not, but it's um the like the whole parallel institutions thing where if there's a whatever it is, <laughs> they create a Christian version of it. And right. So, like, that was so important with their contemporary Christian music. Like, well, we have our music, but – and when people would leave it, it was seen as, like, being over – like, taken over the dark side. But yeah, I think you're completely right that if if Christian musicians now ended up having a degree of mainstream success, it would be – it would be heralded. They'd be like, now you can witness to such a broader audience. This is going to be great. Like, they would consider it something to be – yeah, yeah, and it, I don't think that there's much in the way. I don't think people care about purity anymore, do they? Oh, yes, they do. What? Yeah. yeah. Where have you why? Been? Okay, so why does Justin Bieber get such a pass? Oh, the so same reason Donald Trump crowd. gets a pass. <laughs> because who fucking cares if they were famous before? Like, I, I think he gets the pass because it's well. First of all, he doesn't really. I think a lot of people in like real, like more like the real evangelical culture think it's kind of a. We, I don't know. I don't know that people okay. are fully on board with him, but there's, and there's like, I don't, it's hard to, I think, parse it out, but with like the, cause this is, I mean, this is like in the, the wake of Carl Lentz and Hillsong. Yeah. Music. A lot of evangelicals aren't like, they'll do Hillsong music because it's like, whatever, they don't discriminate when it comes to shitty music, but, um, <laughs> 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 but when it comes to like the theologies of, uh, Hillsong and their affiliates, I don't think they're super on board. Um, but I think in the same way, though, if anyone is giving him a pass, it's like when D- Donald Trump was a baby Christian, so they just gave him a pass on being shitty. And then I think they'll do that with anyone who already has a level of notoriety. And then they who can they bring in like, the bodies. Yeah, yeah. They'll start like kind of crossing over and Nitpicking finding them. something appealing about Christianity or pretending like they do. Which and, brings me to the question. What do you think of Jerry Falwell Jr.'s pelvic uh, uh, area. Well, it's pelvic it's area for one. It's nice. Pelvic cleavage. <laughs> pelvic cleavage. <laughs> yeah, the the picture with the zipper, right? Oh god, yes. that was so yes. funny. Yeah. Um, what do I think of it? <laughs> I don't know. I think. <laughs> Did you always? I mean, was it around Liberty? Like he's just a, a figurehead type person, and. <laughs> Yeah, we we've I touched on this a little bit before, so I don't want to be too lengthy okay. on it. But um, basically, like when he first came in, he wasn't like no one really knew much about him. He was just uh, I mean, he was a lawyer uh, and he was like seemingly fine at it, but there was nothing particularly special about him. Uh, Jerry Ju- uh, Jerry Senior divided up his church and university between his two sons, um, so Jerry Junior got the school and ran ran that, and then Jonathan Falwell got uh, the church and became the pastor of that and. I mean, I would say within a year, um, Jerry, within Jerry's first year, he would say and do things where you're just, I don't know, like that's weird, uh, kind of practice, but it, it didn't take long before uh, even the people who go there uh, and the people that I knew, cause my first year there was his first year as oh, okay. president of the university. And it was just one of those, like a lot of people were quickly like, I, I don't think that he's not he's not going to be any sort of like spiritual yeah like yeah, leader right. for the university he's just going to be doing businessy things but it it took a year for it to start turning very <laughs> republican 
Yeah, he was he wasn't like well spoken or anything. He just seemed like kind of a at first it just seemed like him and his wife were just kind of nice people taking on the mantle of head of the college. And then he started getting, you know, real uh, mouthy about it. Hmm. Did you find yourself attracted to him? <laughs> to him? <laughs> to to his face? No. <laughs> to, but he was to uh not to, to um, his pelvic cleavage. To uh, his pelvic cleavage. Aura. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm flesh and blood human, you know. I mean, what what's you, what are you supposed That's to do? Right. I life. feel like I, so. Is it is it fair for us to completely bash him with you? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, because a uh, a few weeks ago I was down in Miami and I called Karen. I'm like, get her. I texted him like, guess what I'm in front of the hostel. Ah, nice. <laughs> yeah. And it's so true. Like, if you drove by it, you would have no idea that there's a hostel there. It's like this jungle, uh, over overgrown area that's a tiny little side entrance next to some tiny little patch of a strip mall. That's weird. You would, yeah. It's like it, built to be inconspicuous. Yeah. yeah. Well, and for the listeners, the, ho- the aforementioned hostel is, um, was something that, I don't really know how he bought it. It was with like with Liberty money and for somebody, but also like not, I really don't know the legal well, way. We know, of we know a little bit about it. Yeah. Go back to our episode. <laughs> oh, very tall, well. well, he and his wife became friends with a pool attendant at the yeah. Fountain Blue <laughs> hotel. And they did a lot of stuff together, apparently vacations and, and such. And then he was like, Oh, uh, you want to make a, an investment with me? And then he, the kid decided this was the good investment to make. And I guess Jerry Falwell Jr. Didn't say, Ooh, maybe not the best choice. But it was a hostel that very much um, was LGBTQ friendly, uh, definitely a party place because it was a block or two away from all the bars. There's lots of fucking and drinking going on there. Um, Yes, I think so. Everything, the hallways are black lights, which always makes me feel secure and safe. (laughs) A lot of things that you would get fined for, apparently. At Liberty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Finder. We know about those. Yeah. I like to think of it as like a, uh, an inconspicuous stable full of hot young stallions owned by a tired <laughs> old building. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That sounds pretty reasonable. Um, did after college, did any of, did either, uh, of you stay in the church for a while or was that, uh, I went, I became a missionary, so I did youth with a mission between my YWAM. senior year. <laughs> That's right. Uh, can we have you back to do an episode on YWAM? I would love it. Okay, okay. Because, we're going to figure this out because okay. I want to talk about this. I knew people who joined it. There, I think maybe some of the people who joined it aren't the type of people who have the, a problem with it or would want to talk about it, but this right. would be a good time. Yeah, um, <laughs> happy to. So I did that, had a blast, and did it after what was called a discipleship training school after I graduated in Australia, went to India. Then I became a missionary. I ended up meeting my husband. We became missionaries. So I was deep in it while Bonnie was in, you know, it, no, you're for what it is secular. No, uh, wonderland. Of no, <laughs> no. After college, I came back here and joined the singles group at at uh, oh, our church, right. and and dated this guy, and and went out with another guy, and uh, we did a lot of going to brunch after church. But then I left for Los Angeles after that. Yeah. I'm gonna say you did you did your stint as Jim Belushi and then came back and uh <laughs> rejoined the fold for the speed dating. <laughs> the singles group was very much about uh, finding a husband. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. I did yeah. people in singles group at Liberty. Uh and it was basically like the yeah, I mean the Christian version of a dating app. You find a giant ass fucking church and you just join the singles group. And then when you get bored of all the people there, you just go to a new church and join that singles gotcha. group. Yeah. Right. 
I was, yeah. I would never have thought of going to a different church because it's like Karen said, we were, we were the biggest one and it, like going anywhere else would have been um, like settling, mm. you know, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I was a real Christian. So I was looking for <laughs> God speaking, but yeah, when I started YWAM, that's when I, things became much more non-denominational. And unfortunately, growing up Southern Baptist, we didn't know what non-denominational was. We knew us Christians, everyone else, not Christians. That's it. And so (laughs) I thought non-denominational meant like, hey, all denominations are welcome. I didn't And then right away got hit in the face with the speaking in tongues and the raising of the hands and very uncomfortable swaying. Yeah, that's (laughs) that's big. Was that that, all that stuff's big with YWAM, right? Yeah. Because my non denominational was basically Southern Baptist in disguise. I mean, it was pretty like bland. Um, I mean, we were cool because you could wear jeans and t shirt, but uh, (laughs) theologically speaking, and when it comes to like the, how reserved the music was and things like that, it was, it really was just a Southern Baptist church that doesn't yeah. sign the documents or whatever they need to, to get funding and be controlled. <laughs> you by don't them. have to pay the uh, Southern Baptist convention union dues. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And our pastor ended up being the head of the Southern Baptist convention for a what? while. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's Trumpy's number one. Oh, my God. Uh, he's in all those pictures. So um, he has since blocked me on Twitter. <laughs> but Were you such abusive? No, I actually, because he's in Texas, and he was posting all about, um, you know, that the the cages are keeping kids in aren't that bad. Oh, and God. so I was just like, you know, hey, what's happened to you? Can you do something to take care of those kids? He told me I could email him, um, <laughs> which I haven't, but he did block me. And then um, later I so, got on. Would you want like, your kids in those cages? <laughs> like, they're not that bad. Like, Fuck you. <laughs> if so my kids would, broke the law. They would deserve to be in those cages. That's right. I mean, if they're gay, cages <laughs> are an option. But um, but so then I snuck over on the deconversion therapy uh, Twitter. And what? Thing, he said something else, Trumpy. And I said, Trump has really changed you. And then later got a notification that I got all these likes. And one of them was from Kenneth Copeland. And I'm like, oh, yeah. wow. But he read, he must have read it the other way. Yeah. Like, Trump <laughs> has really changed you. That's how it's better life. <laughs> I didn't realize until today that Kenneth Copeland was on Trump's like evangelical outreach oh. uh, committee or something. No. That's insane to me. Find it. Yeah. Yeah. There's, you know, that's what's so fascinating is that between our Southern Baptist preacher, Kenneth Copeland, Paula White, who led him to Christ, all these different people, none of them can agree on theology. So Trump knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah. He was, yeah, he was just getting those votes by giving them all access to power and then that just thrilled them on belief and they brought in the votes. Yep. I think all it was is okay, if we can all agree don't kill unborn babies, then we're gonna get the vote. Yeah, and that's been the tactic since Jerry Sr. contributed to the foundation of the moral majority. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. We've it's it's almost just tires it's just tiresome at this point to hear the same exact thing like touted every two seconds. And it's always yeah, but the unborn baby it's like can you not even have a conversation about other things at this point like i don't really know where to well i I, when he said something he said something after the election about like let's have the courage to protect the unborn and i because i tweet back at this pastor too but mine are a little bit more um chicken shit (laughs) and i said (laughs) i said it is also nice to protect the born 
and um, you know, a few people liked it. Nothing yeah. good like Karen's, but <laughs> <laughs> you don't get those Karen likes. That's tough. That, but, but you know, I mean, we've established that my method for convincing people is very subtle and just <laughs> seed planting. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't hand out tracks on the street corner, to be honest. <laughs> I sang shut de do. <laughs> Keep out, <you> double. <laughs> um, okay, I gotta ask this. No humble tip. But. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can get him to do a cover. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tag him in this episode and ask him if he can yeah. uh, do a cover for that song. Uh, <laughs> it's always Karen, great when it's a pile of white kids doing it. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> you, Karen, you have this. There was this thing in your bio that I think is so funny that I wanted to ask about, and. Um, I don't know if this is when you were in high school or college or when this was in your life, but there is a story of having um, the demon of intellectualism uh, try cast out oh, of yeah. you or attempted to yes. be. Uh, yes. I, I please just expand that was upon multiple that. Multiple times. Multiple times. This your church and, was really scared of your intellect. Well, I don't know if you guys know, but the difference between. Uh, knowing who Jesus is and having him as your savior is 12 inches between your heart <laughs> and your head. Like all those stupid <laughs> things that we hear, you know. And when I was becoming baptized in the Holy Spirit, because, you know, I wanted to talk in tongues. I wanted to do what all these y whammers were doing. And I couldn't do it. Like, I'm like, why is this not happening? They, that was the thing that they kept coming up against, you're thinking too much. And so <laughs> that became, you know, it's a demon of intellectualism that you're thinking too much. So the, they tried to cast it out of me two different times, two different places, YWAM and then the church I went to, uh, Nashville. And um, Wait, I, were they affiliated with YWAM or did this just come up independently, two separate I things? I was seen as intellectual twice, <laughs> wow. two different places. Um, not at any school I went to, but <laughs> at YWAM and then the church. And it was more because I was so earnest and I was so desperate to like, why am I not receiving these blessings that other people are? And it like broke my heart because yeah. I thought, I want to be as close to Jesus as I can, and this is a way to do it, and why can't I do it? So, yeah, I had, um, yeah, they tried to cast that out of me, and it never made me go, why don't they want me to think? You yeah. know, that never occurred. It was all just like, I've got to really uh, conquer this. And when the people would come by and touch people's heads and they'd be slain in the spirit, I'd be like on one toe, Ugh. like balancing, hoping something would happen. And <laughs> oh, man. you know, it never did. And I was always like, why not me, God? So this, yep. the secular version of that, I think is in the acting community. When they say to you, you're too much in your head. Like you're right. thinking about it instead of feeling it. That's it. Yeah, but the problem, is that I guess the big difference is you're trying to get into something, pretend like a character for a role. <laughs> is it really different? I know. I, is it really yeah, different? That's what I'm getting at. It's valid. <laughs> exactly. I, I, when I was at Liberty, I got pretend. No, I'm kidding. At Liberty, I got caught up with a. I don't want to say caught up. I, I honestly only have good things to say about this group of people, and they were really like it was an important part of my life for when I was involved in it. And I still, by extension, know some of the people who, who ran it and they're, they're just good people. And I, I don't have anything negative to say about them, even if I don't fall on the same side of the fence as they do on certain things. But I'm like, I remember feeling that need too, when I saw people experiencing, or I don't know, you could put air quotes around that if you want, but th that, having that emotional response to it or having uh, a word from the Lord or all these things, I started going to a charismatic prayer group and uh, tr did the whole thing, like the arms up, swinging around, dancing in the aisles yeah. while we all sang the same prayer slash song over and over again for two hours straight. Like, and I'm like, I look back on that and I'm like, that's a, I don't even really, I, I know what I was looking for at the time or, or chasing, I guess. Um, even if I didn't then, 
But it is funny when you find people who are having, and they're great. Like these were great people, and they were some of the first people that exposed me to more like liberal ideologies, and that that's okay mm-hmm. as a Christian was like, oh, it's okay to vote Democrat. It's okay to care about social programs, and that these were also the people who were having like the the charismatic experiences. So um, it was a definitely a stepping stone in my life. But uh, it's such an interesting thing to think back on now because I'm not entirely sure what was happening in me or what I was doing. But well, uh, you know, I mean, if you think of other, again, secular other, well, it's not secular because it was kind of religious, but George Harrison talks about chanting and he, he talks in some interview like, Oh, you know, there was one section of my life where for three days I drove through the Europe chanting this one chant. I'm like, what? What? (laughs) Yeah. So it's, it's not just, it's not just, you know, the Christian offshoots. It's, that's it's just that's a thing if you look at any yeah. religion there's somewhere where we're trying to do something to get to that emotional place yeah uh, it's like you're true. inducing a uh you're trying to like manually induce a uh yeah like a psychological state yeah Which, right so i um i was having a uh, beer with some deconstructed people uh last year and one of them is still a church musician, but he was talking about how he used to go on the road. It was just some evangelist and him. And he knew like how to play all those dissonant chords over and over Mm -hmm. that you go into when you want people to like pray harder or feel Jesus bubbling up in you. Like it's a totally manufactured thing to get people's heartbeat going in a certain way. Um, and yeah, I thought everything was sincere. I was trying my damnedest and yep. Too intellectual for them. (laughs) So do, I mean, I definitely hear from you, Bonnie, that, you know, after you, your kind of exit in college and then, uh, like as over the next few years after leaving that Christian college that there was, you lost kind of all connection to it. Did you Karen? Did you lose all connection to like, do you have any affiliation or identification with Christianity anymore? Or no, did you, I don't, okay. um, except for being a disappointment to my family. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is, is gone. Um, yeah. Uh, I, but it took me a good 10 years probably to totally deconvert because I wasn't doing it in a time like now where you can find community online. Yeah. Uh, so, and I live in the South. Um, mm. So, yeah, it, it took a long time. Yeah. That's, I remember uh, my mom and I were at a funeral in the last year or two, and it was Episcopalian and the pastor or whatever he is in the Episcopalian church said, you know, anybody who's been baptized in the Christian church may partake of communion. And my mom whispers to me, that means we can take it. (laughs) 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 And so she gets up and she's like, are you coming? I'm like, no, I I would be the hugest hypocrite ever. I got (laughs) up just to take it. But, um, it was it was very now it's way easier to go no yeah you know? not yeah. not just because i'm lucky to have my mom then who you know is heathen adjacent i guess <laughs> um heathen adjacent i, guess. I like it but well, i'm still yeah my family some of them are still christian and you know i'll be like okay you want guys want to lead us in prayer like i go ahead and throw them the ball you know, yeah. I, I have no problem with that. I come across people who um, really think you should, you know, stand up against certain people in your family. But for me, relationship, especially with elderly parents, is important. So, yeah, I'd like to keep keep the peace with certain people who I know that, you know, religion is their peacemaker and they might be at a stage in life or an age in life where I know they need that and I'm not going to be the one to take it away. Which sounds like a fairly healthy way to look at it, considering that, I mean, my experience with people and I don't know who it's like, 
there's just a lot of people right now who are seem like they've converted from fundamentalist Christianity to fundamentalist atheism that now find it their mission to destroy it for everybody else. Uh, I think right. there's something to be said for critiquing the dangerous and unhelpful parts of it. And if that might makes them mad, so be it. But um, I, I think there's ways to, you know, I mean, for, even for myself, for example, I still participate in it to a degree. And I think there's ways to make it work in a way if you choose to, but I'm trying to like, I think that's something that I'm always experiencing and seeing is just like you traded one fundamentalism for another and it doesn't feel like you've actually found any sort of inner peace, yeah. which is, isn't that the goal? What, what about live and let live? Like if we did that, whole, if we really did what that said, like you have your religion and I'll have mine and we're not going to try to shove mine on yours and yours on mine and we'll let each other live and we won't kill each other. <laughs> I think that that would be a really nice solution. Yeah. It'd be nice to get there. Maybe someday. And yeah. what story. I love is like people knowing that you're, that you're out or pretty much knowing that you're out. And so they'll throw in like little comments, like, like they're trying to plant that seed, you know, you know, that you're talking about something that's stressful or, you know, worrisome, you know, like all the stuff with the election. Uh, yeah. Somebody will chime in. It'll be like, "Well, you just gotta, just gotta keep going and have faith that God's in control." Oh like, well, that's, that's you know way too subtle at all. for down here. <laughs> he was, and Biden's in, and praise God. Oh Thanks, no, how many? Lord. Do you guys have the the Jesus twenty twenty bumper stickers? I know uh, you do, no. Karen. Oh so yeah. What, so what I have, I didn't tell you this, Bonnie, but. So there's a house nearby where we drive, and they have had the Jesus 2020 forever. I drove by the other day, and it says Jesus 2021. <laughs> so I don't know if they're like, you know, if maybe this councilman runoff will be in our favor, oh or God. if it's, you know, I don't know. But yeah, I live in a very Christian area with all your favorite Christian singers and Pastors. And we have a, oh, I sent Karen a picture the other night. Every Friday night when the election was, you know, the run up to the election. And then after we would have the people with the Trump flags and the posters and they would bring children and they're still out there now. And I'm like, I'm not from where Mar-a-Lago is. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. But that, uh, I'm like that conservative, like quarter acre strip that runs all the way up the coast. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I think they import those people because this it's a very um, active street corner. But it's at this point, I'm like, what are you guys doing other than going outside on a Friday night and dancing to Disco Inferno? Because <laughs> that's what they were playing. And I'm like, if you're even making reference to burn down the Capitol, you're in big trouble with my <laughs> like, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I might uh, honk my horn. If I, I might guess. call yeah, yeah. someone. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I feel like I wanted to ask you guys a couple of questions outside of um, you know we got through here in your story and where you ended up. Um, something that's been in the uh, <laughs> in the I don't want to say the news, but I don't know, certainly around Reddit in some interesting groups that like to discuss the problems with evangelicalism. There's been some fun things about Dave Ramsey. Yes. Are you what guys, would you like to know? You, how familiar are you both with Dave Ramsey? Karen will know. He's a heathen. So Dave Ramsey, let's see, the guy two doors up worked for um, my friend. Oh, you know, people that work for him. Team. I can tell you stuff about his kid what do you want to know oh i actually was i didn't know you had so much inside knowledge i was actually just uh you know thinking about how interesting it is that all like the stuff that he has going on and the stuff that came out with him is a cult like like a cult like type work environment should um, i be googling him now as you all talk you don't even know no. who he is maybe no i don't okay. know so we probably <laughs> talked about him, and I've blo I've just blocked it out. Your church must have done a financial peace university, did I, it not? I taught it to teenagers. You yeah. taught it? Yeah. At church? Not, not like perfect. I did. They had like a student one, and I was working with youth groups at one point. 
So we were doing that like a six week thing. You know, it wasn't the hardcore. Okay. Yeah, I think I might have done a student version of it when I was in high school. Um, but my church, every church I've ever, I had ever been to up until I like post college had, um, had, had, okay, I'm saying that like it's a lot. It was two, <laughs> two churches. Uh, <laughs> they did a financial peace university. So Dave Ramsey is essentially, um, to be honest, looking back at what I learned and what he teaches on a financial level, uh, if you're someone who's in debt and has racked up credit card debt, it doesn't even seem like the principles are bad. Um, exactly. It's yeah. just pretty real practical type of pra- practical financial information uh, that can actually help you get out of debt. So I'm not even trying to knock the process, but apparently the dude has been absolutely crazy for a quite some time. And like, if you, (laughs) if he's going to hire you, he has to interview your spouse to make sure you're not married to somebody crazy. Um, he's had questions come up about like whether or not you can fire people for having an affairs. And he's like, absolutely. If you can't, if your wife can't trust you, why can I, um, he, he gets really invested in your personal life. And if, if anyone seems to be having if, if if anyone in your personal life is making your work life more difficult or you don't give to him you know complete and total loyalty he, he's more than happy to fire you because he demands in the way that trump does complete and total loyalty so so he's a christian yeah, yeah. oh yeah super he has a syndicated radio show very big even with non-christian okay so i i'm going to i'm going to ask a question that's a hole poker in what you just said so if his philosophy is if your wife can't trust you why could i then why doesn't that apply to trump if that's your wife question. can't trust you, why should the American people <laughs> trump hasn't cheated on his wife on. is, is ramsey a big up. trump guy of course guy? he has not, are you being funny? Or are you being sarcastic? I am being. I'm. Kidding, I'm, no. I'm saying t- Dave Ramsey, along with all of his evangelical cohorts, don't believe Trump cheated on his wife they and had don't? a bunch of women pee on him in a hotel in Russia. <laughs> Wait a minute, but so they don't believe the whole Stormy Daniels thing? Uh not enough. I don't think. I feel like really? they. I think they feel like it's like I think they sweep it under the rug in a way that's just like, well, there's no way to know. And I think she just wanted to get money out of them, so they just paid her to be quiet to stop doing this. It's like settling out of court, essentially. I think they think it was just that was a lifetime ago. Like that was a different man at that right. point. Yeah, it's, he wasn't Christian then. Was is or, he a okay. big Trump guy? Uh, yes. Yeah, so. um I, I've been thinking what I can say without getting, I don't want to, you know, give away some people's information, but I will say, uh, I know someone very healthy who the sickest person I've ever known with COVID as in almost died a few times, uh, works there, got it in the summer from working there because now Dave Ramsey's a big no masker. Oh yeah. Um, and it, you know, he's going to be a long term or very sick. And the other thing I'm aware of besides that his son might not be so bright. Oh, is <laughs> every time I get on LinkedIn, you know how they show you what jobs you could have, even though you're not looking for one. Yeah. All the time, they have such high turnover for writers. Now, I don't, that's what shows up in my algorithm. But it is every time I get on there, they're looking for writers. So the, yeah, the overturn must just be, or the turnover must be incredible that people don't stay there. I mean, his new thing was like, someone reported them to OSHA because no one took the masking regulations seriously. And Good. I mean, he just let loose on how like he he's more than happy to, to fire them. Uh, if he did finds out see, who they are. Did you see where either he or someone responded to a journalist who had done, um, and this was in the last week or two done an article about him and, then they sent a big email back just losing their shit and saying, oh, that guy thinks he's such a big man. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, this is his name. He lives here. Why don't you what? call him? Yeah. Oh, my what God. Is he, like, doxed somebody? 
Yes, yes. I thought that's what you were going to get at. No, yeah. now that we're all big Ra- Dave Ramsey fans. <laughs> Sam, did you bust out so, your uh, yeah, bust out so your I question. put a little game together for us to, to kind of close up here. Uh, when you were in youth group, did you ever do the icebreaker game, Two Truths and a Lie? Yes. No. Okay, so I have uh, two <laughs> I have uh, – that, you know, everyone sits in a circle, tells two true things about themselves and makes one up. And supposedly you get to know each other better that way. Uh, yeah. I, so we have two truths and a lie with Dave Ramsey. Uh, <laughs> two of the things that I, we got two rounds. Two of the things I'm going to read are true things that he said, actual quotes. And one of them uh, I made up. And let's see if you, uh, Bonnie, <laughs> you are a little out of your element here. But we'll see if uh, you guys can tell the difference between them. Quote one. When hiring someone, you are employing more than just the person. You're taking on the whole family. And when they are married to someone who is domineering, unstable, or simply full of drama, you'll end up with a team member who can't be creative, productive, or excellent. Quote two, there is nothing more important than getting out of debt. It has, come, it has to come before your relationships with your friends and family because when we are in debt, all our relationships suffer because of it. And quote three. I'm so tired of being falsely accused of being a jerk when all I'm trying to do is help people. Those are all correct. (laughs) (laughs) Number two is, is the one you made up. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Don't put getting out of debt before your relationships with your friends and family. Okay. Okay. All right. You snuck in a phrase. (laughs) <laughs> especially if you give your money to the church and that's how you get in debt i like that bonnie with no understanding of dave ramsey was able to figure that out oh, she has, karen's karen's just ascribing her values to james ramsey, or dave <laughs> yeah. ramsey. all right so round two we have uh quote one generosity is the cornerstone of those who build we- wealth and are healthy always be a giver to win at life and money Five, I will fire you instantly for your lack of loyalty, your lack of class, and the fact that you are a moron and you snuck through our hiring process. (laughs) Quote six, Jesus talked as much about money as he did about salvation. I think we should take that as a serious indicator that he cared about personal finances. I'm hoping it's the last one. Do I get to decide too? Yeah. Five. It is the last one. Jesus talked about <laughs> money as he did about <laughs> five, it's though. It's so funny. Moron. Right. I, it's funny because, you know, in just leading up to this, I definitely gave away two of those in each round. <laughs> but they still sounded, I don't know. It's like still hard to believe somebody would say all of those things. <laughs> oh, it's just. And again, it's like, how are people going? This is fine. This is OK. Everyone should quit there. Okay. Oh, yeah. That place needs to go. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah, People should quit a lot of things. <laughs> we don't have choices because we need our stupid health insurance. Choke. <laughs> <laughs> I just well. remember his saying, don't shop in stores that don't have concrete floors. Um. What? Uh, what does that even mean? <laughs> it means like don't go to the mall, shop, get your your dockers at Costco. That's what oh. he's saying. Okay. Did he uh, has, he must have had some investments in Costco at the time. Right. Also, exactly. I go to Costco has really uh honestly some good deals on alcohol. I don't know if you've ever gone to Costco for your booze, but it's Oh, they don't sell that here. Real deal. <laughs> I will buy some Kirkland jeans, though. <laughs> like a boss. And so Costco. You're going hard in with the denim now that you're no longer at liberty. Yeah, now that no one's feeling your pants to make sure they're denim. <laughs> yeah, I've developed the denim fetish over the years. You get a full denim suit for uh, your... That's right. Do your Justin Timberlake suit. <laughs> oh, God. Remember... Oh. <laughs> The old Lynchburg tuxedo. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both for uh, for taking the time to hang out with us and talk about yourselves and just talk about some stupid shit. It was really fun. You guys are great. 
<laughs> Thank you. And yeah, we're going to interview the hell out of you soon. Yeah, let's definitely get that. I want to let's get that scheduled. I, I think that'd be a lot of fun. OK, yeah, that sounds good. Casey, yeah. It's great to meet you guys. Yeah, good to meet great. you. Thanks, guys. What do you want? Well, first of all, uh, anyone who, um, you know, enjoyed this conversation, which better be all of you, uh, you can check <laughs> Karen and Bonnie out with uh, the Deconversion Therapy podcast. Uh, you guys have been doing that for over a year. How long have you been doing your podcast? Two years. Two years. Really? Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. We went over our 100th episode. We were going to do something fun. But then Christmas slash insurrection happened. Mm. So <laughs> we thought we'd postpone, but we will soon. But yeah, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, um, Deconversion Therapy. And people can send in their funny stories because we do a letter sewed about once a month where we read everyone's like embarrassing, crazy uh, feeling up of jeans. <laughs> I love how we turned that into a real story, and that did not happen to Casey. If everyone needs to know, like Casey didn't have his pants felt up it's before choir happen. practice. That's right. I think the memory's implanted now. Yeah. I actually remember that that cold hand on the back of my Dockers. <laughs> my Dockers. <laughs> We've got it now. Uh, yeah, definitely check them out on social media. They post a lot of funny things. We're uh, we're striving to be as funny as they are with our Instagram. <laughs> we just steal. That's, That's all, it. Karen. Just take other people's. I had Think I had artists. one meme last year that I was so proud of, and maybe seven people liked. <laughs> <laughs> it's so disappointing when oh, you I make love one. When you post something, you're like, "This is going to be a hit." You're like, "What the fuck? <laughs> Ten likes." Right. I know. Comes in and they go, "Well, actually." Oh yeah. <laughs> There, you missed how tall the tree in the Garden of Eden was. <laughs> <laughs> that feels like something that actually happened to you. A pretty close. We've got a few of those. That was really specific there. <laughs> it was Delete. pretty much, but mine was a thinker. So I know why people didn't like it. Yeah. yeah, mean, right. yeah. Memes aren't Too for thinkers. Effort. They, Too they, their spirit of ex, of uh, intellectualism had been exercised. <laughs> <in the early laughs> right. They're too lazy to walk the twelve inches from the heart to their head. <laughs> you don't have the intellectual chops for this meme. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, of course, everyone can check us out on Instagram. We finally started a Twitter, uh, so you can find us there at GUC Podcast. I have we, uh, we're going to grow the following on that. Uh, I've never used Twitter in my life, so this is really a disaster. And but Twitter's find a good us place on- to read what's going on, not to yeah. have a conversation and to troll your former pastor. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am going to give that a try. <laughs> but. Uh, that's pretty much it for us. I don't know if, uh, Casey, you got any last things to uh, throw out there that I missed? I don't think so. Uh, like, subscribe, give us a five-star review, and we will catch you next time. See you, everyone. Because he died on the cross, I put that SPF on. That SPF on. That SPF on. The veil was on. Hell is on. But I won't feel it because I got that SPF